If you're a Bulldog supporter, you know, deep down, that the club is unfairly treated because people don't like the Bulldogs. Correction, they don't like Bulldogs fans. Now, I am here to tell you that this feeling that the league, the media, the refs, the commentators are all literally against the Bulldogs is 100% valid and part of the entire system. It's a problem within Australian sports and the country in general. And it stemmed from a deep undercurrent of racism, a hate for Bulldogs Arab supporters. For the last decade, the Bulldogs have been doing poorly, no question. And so, dislike for the dogs has dropped off. Some commentators are even now praising the Bulldogs. And if you're a supporter at home listening to this positivity, it feels weird coming from people who never have a positive thing to say about the dogs. And all of a sudden, it's, oh wow, the entertainers are back. And oh, here come the dogs of war. And it's so strange that it's got you feeling like it's a bad omen. And some scandal is just around the corner. This traumatic response, because that's what it is, thinking that something terrible is bound to happen to the dogs, is not based on some wild conspiracy theory your brain is making up. There is enough evidence out there to suggest that this is fair dinkum. We just got to connect all the dots. There is a deeper story behind the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs that goes beyond the field, the scoreboard and the ladder. It's about racism, Australian style, directed at Middle Easterners that has been picked up and slapped onto the club, giving everyone a convenient excuse to vent their frustrations out. It's wrong and unfair, and we're gonna call it out for what it is. If you've been a Bulldog supporter from at least the 90s onwards, you've undoubtedly had a conversation about footy with mates at work or school and heard someone drop the phrase, the Wog Dogs, as a friendly euphemism for the Canterbury Bulldogs. Now, while this might seem like harmless banter because no one loves a little casual racism, just like Australians, it's so important because it leads right to the heart of the problem. The Bulldogs Club, nestled nicely in the heart of Western Sydney, has been branded unequivocally as the club of Middle Eastern supporters, or specifically, LEBS. And this branding comes with all the baggage of Australia's deep resentment for the entire Arabic and Muslim migration story. If you're not familiar with the term WOG, it is a racial slur used in Australia for people of Mediterranean or Arabic descent, different to the British use of the term. If you think this isn't real, just check out its representation in popular culture. Notable examples like the movie Wog Boy, the TV series Fat Pizza, and more contemporary examples like Super Wog. All of this hits on the stark cultural divide between Anglo culture and Middle Eastern migrants. The point is that the Bulldogs have been classified by the entirety of Australia as the team of Lebanese supporters and more so Muslims. But what has incited this race fueled hatred imposed upon the Bulldogs club that leads to systematic unfair treatment in the league? Well, foremost, I blame the media. Let's look at some examples. A 2018 article in the Daily Telegraph reported on crowd behavior at a Bulldogs match stating, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs have long been a club known for their unruly fans, many whom come from Western Sydney's migrant communities. In another article from the Daily Telegraph, journalist Dean Ritchie wrote about a violent altercation involving a Bulldogs fan stating, there is a dog element amongst the Bulldogs fan base, which the club has to address. The tension and aggressive behavior have roots in cultural backgrounds that need to be dealt with. And let's not forget the Chasers War on Everything stunt back in 2006, where Chaz dressed up as a Bulldog supporter and pretended to sell toy weapons at balaclavas to Bulldogs fans at a game, highlighting perfectly the perception that the Bulldogs fans are criminals and hooligans. This is just a very 
quick sample of the media's narrative about race-related violent fans associated with the Bulldogs, which has even been called out by the media themselves. An article in the Sydney Morning Herald in 2020 pointed out the Bulldogs have once again been thrust into the spotlight with the club's fan base accused of inciting violence and disrespect towards other team's supporters. While all clubs experience unruly fan behaviour, it seems only the Bulldogs supporters get labelled in this manner consistently. In an opinion piece for The Raw, a sports website, a commentator noted there seems to be an implicit assumption that because the Bulldogs fan base includes a high proportion of people from Middle Eastern backgrounds, they are more prone to violence or hooliganism. Now this is a dangerous stereotype that does not align with reality on the ground. I.e. this media bashing of the Bulldogs, which incites fear and hate for the club, relies solely on using some good old casual racism about violent prone Arabs. <gasps> and the media does this because sensationalism helps sell papers and get eyeballs on headlines, which pushes advertising revenue. They spread hate for profits. But for the majority of Arabic Australians, it's disgusting and inexcusable slander. But where does this anti-Middle Eastern sentiment come from? Well, it didn't start with people just disliking Bulldogs fans. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. The bigotry towards Arabic people in the Western world reached its apex following the September 11 attacks. Arabs, and specifically Muslims, since then have been treated with suspicion and targets of widespread discrimination, all for the sake of political gain by opportunistic nationalist politicians and right-wing groups. More locally significant to this anti-Arab culture in Australia were the Scaf Gang raids, the Bali bombings and the Cronulla riots. The Scaf Gang crimes were horrendous, but it conveniently gave the media free license to shape public opinion fear-mongering to develop the narrative that Arab migrants are all sexual predators and violent criminals. This is perpetuated by the constant media coverage of Lebanese gang wars, bikey clubs and organised crime, which has instilled an unshakable legacy of cultural hate between the rest of peaceful Australia and Arab communities across the nation. The irony, of course, being that the same organised crime and bikey activities is heavily integrated into Anglo culture. In fact, it was started there. The Bali bombings, being Australia's equivalent to 9-11, gave the media and already suspicious Australians another reason to hate on Muslims, which was linked to Arabs more generally. Although, the irony here being, Indonesian Muslims are not Arabs. But this perfectly underscores the inherent ignorance that comes with racism in this country. And all of this media fueled resentment culminated in the 2005 Cronulla riots, where groups of angry Aussies roamed the streets of southern Sydney looking for anyone who remotely looked like a leb to take out their rage on. The irony again being the people the Aussies attacked during the main event of the riots were not even Lebanese. Alan Jones, a highly influential talkback radio host, was a prime agitator in this race riot. Jones, on his show, stated, We don't have Anglo-Saxon kids out there raping women in Western Sydney. Jones also supported one listener's suggestion that bikies be brought down to Cronulla Railway Station to deal with Lebanese thugs and that the event be televised. In 2009, the New South Wales Administrative Decisions Tribunal found Jones and the radio station 2GB guilty of vilifying Lebanese Muslims during the Cronulla riot broadcasts. Even Peter Dutton, now leader of the Federal Liberal Party, suggested in 2016 it had been a mistake to resettle Lebanese refugees here. The point of highlighting 
this history is that Arab Australians have been subjected to abuse and vilification in this country thanks to media sensationalism. And this has rubbed off on Australians, but it has definitely rubbed off on the Bulldogs as a club, meaning a majority of Australians dislike the Bulldogs, not based on the merits of the team or the club, but because of their large Middle Eastern supporter base, which is dumb because other teams have large Arab supporter bases too. But a 2017 survey by Roy Morgan found that the Bulldogs were one of the most disliked clubs in the league. A result that is definitely related to the fact that the media has taught Australians to hate on lebs. But how does this relate to how the league treats the club unfairly? Well, let's check out some notable examples. In 2002, the Bulldogs were found to have breached the salary cap by $2 million over three years. In response, the league stripped the club of all competition points effectively, disqualifying them from the finals. This was the largest points deduction in the league's history at the time. Other clubs, such as the Melbourne Storm, which breached the salary cap by almost $4 million over five years, received penalties like the stripping of two premierships and a similar fine, but well after the fact, allowing them to enjoy all the glory of premiership success while the Bulldogs are still remembered as cheaters. In 2018, the Bulldogs players celebrated Mad Monday at a Sydney pub and although that behaviour wasn't exemplary, the punishment was disproportionately harsh, a $250,000 fine by the NRL, the largest ever imposed for a non-game related incident. Compare this to the leniency shown to other clubs in similar situations, for instance when Melbourne Storm players were photographed engaging in similar behaviour in 2021, they faced only minor disciplinary measures. During the 2020 season, the Bulldogs faced a $25,000 fine for a COVID protocol breach when their players attended a school event. This fine was considered excessive compared to other clubs that had similar breaches but were penalised less severely. These are just a few examples. It is my case that these harsher penalties on the Bulldogs are directly related to the general hatred for the club because of its Middle Eastern supporter base. There really is no other explanation as to why this unfair treatment happens. The media gets a hold of an incident involving the Bulldogs, goes into a frenzy and whips it up into a scandal, running it for days because it knows viewers will be outraged because of pre-existing racial prejudice. Then the league comes out with a big show of force to not appear soft on the club. And no one really cares about the obvious bias and inconsistencies of the penalties because, oh well, f them. They're just a bunch of lebs anyway. I think a very powerful observation on this whole issue has come from a non-Australian player who is not integrated with Australia's specific racial tendencies and therefore provides a very fresh perspective on the club and its treatment. James Graham summed it up in 2021 as follows. I've played for a lot of clubs, but the way the Bulldogs are portrayed sometimes seems unfair. It's as if there's always a negative slant, particularly in the tabloid press. I think it's because of the cultural diversity of their supporters. They are easy targets. Yes, they are easy targets. And the club has been embroiled in this anti-Muslim, anti-Arab witch hunt for decades now. It's just a shame that this has happened to a club with such a rich history, one that has done so much, not only for the game, producing endless talents and selflessly promoting the league, but also a club that tirelessly supports the community. Shame on the league and shame on the media especially. Give me 
your Bulldogs buy stories in the comments below. I want to hear them. If you liked this video, please subscribe for more and share this with someone who you think needs to hear it. Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.